going to uh, uh, follow our program. It is just printed. Uh, we're going to intend to have a great time as we celebrate uh, 20 church anniversary for Agape Amen. Community Fellowship. Amen. We, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, have an invocation by Reverend Samuel Aremus. And then we'll have praise and worship by the Agape Youth Band. And after which we will have scripture by ministers. Uh, and then we'll come back for after praise and worship. Amen. 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 Let's give a clap prophet unto Jesus. Amen. You know, it's it's uh, it's great to be 20. You can imagine if someone was born 20 years ago. You imagine where the person is gonna be now? You know, so probably in college, right? Praise the Lord. So God has been good to us as a church. And we can hide it. We can hide it. And that's why we keep saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you for being so good to us. Hallelujah. So join me this evening as we just worship the Lord. As we give thanks to the Lord. This evening's service is all about giving thanks to God. Say, Lord, we thank you. Amen. Would you rise with me this evening as we just pray together? Heavenly Lord, we thank you again and again. We're so grateful to you for all you've done for us. We cannot thank you enough. Lord, since Friday, we have been giving thanks to you. Because you alone are the one who has kept us thus far. And we are very grateful to you, Lord. For keeping us, thank you for everything you've done. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, here we are this evening saying thank you again. And Lord, as we come before you in grace, have mercy on us. In every way we have done it wrongly, please have mercy on us. Cleanse us, O God, by your blood that we might come before you faultless, O God. Lord, we are asking, O God, every word that's going to come this evening. Lord, speak to us from your throne. Speak through your servant, O oh God. Speak through your choirs, O oh God. Speak through every prayer, O oh God. Speak through every word that is spoken from your altar this evening. And let your name be glorified. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Because you have done it again. And because you deserve it. Because you deserve our worship. We give you all the praise. Be thou exalted, O God. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now we want to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you don't want to do that sitting down, right? Let's rise on our feet as we worship the everlasting God. The King of Glory, the Ancient of Days, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Lamb of Gilead, the one that was and is and is to come, is the one who has sustained us for 20 years. So we have come to give him praise again and again and again and again. Somebody celebrate Jesus in the house. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have come indeed to give him thanks today, I want you to do it from your heart unto your father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We are here again to give you thanks and praise and glory and honor for who you are and for all you've done for us. You are a great and mighty God. He has done it again. And he will do it again. Yeah. I have come to 
20 years. It was more than that. Amen. Hallelujah. As long as we are still living, we are made for the glory of his name and for his pleasure. The Lord is worthy to be praised.
Father, we just ask for the Receive a worship. All of the worship. For this last 20 years, receive a worship. All of the worship. For every year in those 20 years, receive a worship. All of the worship. Father, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. came to worship today. And as the song said, nobody can worship for me. And nobody can worship for you. You have to come and give God praise. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 We're getting ready to go a little higher. This time we're going to have our scripture reading. Uh, the first uh, scripture will be from 1 Samuel chapter 17 will be read by Dr. Dwight Conneray, and then the second scripture will be read from Esther, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, uh, read by Dr. Anthony Magnia. Amen. First Samuel, 17th chapter, verses 1 through 4 reads, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shaco, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shoka, Shaco, and Azekah in Ephes Damim, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the, the valley of Elah and set to battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the other side, I'm sorry, on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Sorry. Verse 8, and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and you servants to Saul? Choose you a man of you or for you and let him come down to me. If he, able to, if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve unto us. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowl of the air, 
and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Reading from Esther chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, uh, King James Version. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry and came even before the king's gate and none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was such a great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maid and her chamberlains came and told her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent Remit to cloth Mordecai and take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatak, one of her king's chamberlains, whom had appointed to attend upon her and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hittak went forth to Mordecai unto the street in the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened unto him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay the king's treasurers for the Jews to destroy them. Also, he gave him a copy of the writing of the decree that was given to Shushan to destroy them, to show unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she could go into the king and make supplication unto him and make request before him of her people. And Hattach came and told Esther that the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spake unto Hattach and gave him a commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whatsoever, whether a man or woman shall come into the king, enter into the court who is not called, there is no law of him to put, put to death except such to whom the king shall hold out a golden scepter, and he may live. But I have not been called to come unto the king these 30 days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Verse 13, and says, And then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house for more than all the Jews. Amen. Amen. The church say amen. amen. At this time, we are going to have a welcome by Sister Ruth Arimu, and then afterwards, the occasion will be by Reverend Victor uh, D. Bayai. Amen. Oh. The youth band is gonna be perform is gonna be singing a song uh, about God's glory and um, listen and enjoy. It was my 
to Agape once again and we thank the Lord. Today is the third day of the revival and we are grateful to God it has been from glory to glory, from one level of glory to another and we know that the glory of the Lord has filled the temple again today. Amen. So you are all welcome in the name of the Lord, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and our brethren online, we welcome you all to this auditorium. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, apart from the people from Reverend Justice uh, Church, if you are here this afternoon for the first time, can you wave your hands to the Lord? Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Hallelujah. You are all welcome. We are grateful that you are able to join us for this 20th anniversary. We are so glad and we are rejoicing for what the Lord has done in our lives. So thank you all for coming this afternoon. And we just wanted to relax. We know the Lord has started with us, but more are still coming. Amen? Amen. How many of you are here to be blessed of the Lord? Amen. Yes, I am here and I'm expectant of what the Lord wants to say to me tonight. Because the Lord has been so faithful. Amen. You are all welcome. This is the very best place to be. If you are living around this neighborhood and you are looking for a place of service, I tell you what, your father's house, this is the very best place to be. Amen. So we welcome you into Agape. Thank you so much for coming. Just look to your right and to your left and say welcome. Okay, give high five and say welcome. Give high five. Give high five and say welcome. Amen. Please relax and continue to enjoy the presence of your father. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right, let me teach you how we do it back home in Africa. When I say praise the Lord, you're going to yell hallelujah. All right? All right, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's do it two more times. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, one more time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, welcome to Nigeria. Welcome to Africa. Amen. All right. The reason why we are here this afternoon is to praise the Lord is to celebrate the Lord. Is to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Is to thank God because God spoke to someone and that person listened to the voice of the Lord, yielded to what the Lord asked him to do and started Agape Community Fellowship 20 years ago. And that is the reason why we are all here 
to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. I said like three times, a, uh, three, three days ago that uh, a couple of ministries and churches started 20 years ago and uh, we only hear the history of those churches. Some of them are no more. Some of them are, they, they sold their properties. I was in one of my, uh, one of my theology class one day and one of the professors who was teaching us said, uh, I, I want to announce to you that uh, by the grace of God, I have led three churches to close down. <laughs> what a ministry. I, I was, for somebody that was coming from the village of, uh, of Africa, that cannot be by the grace of God closing down three churches. But we, we want to thank God that today we are not telling stories of once upon a time there was a church called Agape Community Fellowship. We are here today to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. So uh, I, I want to say thank you, Pastor, for, for, for yielding to God and for holding forth these 20 years. Those who are ministers of God, we understand that it is easy to be a chief executive officer of the largest company in the world than to be pastor of a 10 congregation church. It's not easy. But it is by the grace of God. And that is what we have come to celebrate these three days that is culminating today. So just like Sister Ruth said, relax. Relax and celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the life and ministry of Agape Community Fellowship. Once more, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. I'm just going to stand right here. I want to get up in the pulpit. First, uh, just like him, we want to give God all the praise for what he's doing in Agape. And I see God moving in a mighty way right here at Agape. And if you don't got a church home, you're always a weapon to agape. But now is the time to give. We want y'all to give out of the kindness of your heart. But most of all, we want to give you because God had already blessed each and every one of us with some kind of gift, talent, and we ought to give back to what God's given us. I got a call a while ago about 2 o'clock. lady got lupus. She calls me. She can't get out of bed. Right after that, I get a text. I know someone with MS. She's having dehydration problems. So we're shutting down her nervous system. But I look at us. We all sitting here. We all blessed with our health, with our strength, with our eyesight. So I'm not worried about a dollar or two. I don't got it. You don't got it. We know we got bills. Bills going to get paid. We just got to leave that to God. But we got to give him the glory for what he already gave us. Amen. So if y'all just bow with me, I'm going to say a little prayer, and then we can take up the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, dear God, for being in each and one of our lives, dear God. We want to thank you for agape, dear God, for just what you planted at this church, dear God, and seeing it grow and come to fruition. We ask you, dear God, to Keep it, keep it growing, dear God. We want it to be what you would want it to be and not what anybody else would want it to be. We want to be God-centered, God-focused, God all the way. So now, dear God, thank you, dear God. Thank you once again. Help us, dear God, to see whatever we have, dear God, is already yours. So whatever little coins we might be able to contribute, Press down, dear God, shake it together and make it grow so, so we can see your kingdom grow, dear God. So you can see your church grow, dear God. Let this corner be a, known for you and not anyone else. These things we ask in your precious Son of Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 I should give our offering. Can you do? 
to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. Just on your seat. Thank you once again for those who had and those who had not, dear God. We ask you to just uh, offer and be used for the building up of your kingdom, dear God. We just give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. 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 All right, we want to sing a song right now. I want all the, all the guys to go. All right. We want to sing a song that you know. So you're going to sing with us, okay? It's a song you know. I'm sure many of you know this song. All right? Okay, we are waiting. Come on, come on. Run, run, run. We're waiting. Anybody got a microphone? Can we get a microphone for Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, how we there? Okay. <laughs> Salvation and glory, honor and power to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty, the Lord our God is omnipotent, the Lord our God is wonderful. Salvation and glory, honor and power to the Lord our God. 
for the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God is wonderful.
church say amen, honor, and glory. Amen, 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 amen. Let the church say amen. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise today? Amen, amen. At this point in, in, a, in our worship today, Dr. Powell, the under shepherd of the flock, will come and introduce the speaker for today. And then after Dr. Powell come, the uh, uh, Christ Center Choir will come uh, to the choir loft. Amen. Dr. Powell. Amen. Give the Lord a hand to praise. Oh, praise him like you mean it. Give him praise, give him honor, and give him glory. Amen. What an awesome God we serve. We thank him for these 20 years. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Agape Choir. What a wonderful rendition. Amen. And reminder of the goodness and mercy of our God. Amen. I'm here to introduce our guest preacher. He's, he's is known to many that are here. And so I want to introduce to some of you all for the first time and to reacquaint you all that are already familiar with this great man of God. In Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, it says, For Ezra has set his heart to study the law of the Lord and practice it and to teach his statutes and his ordinances in Israel. From that simple passage, it tells me three things about this man of God. The first thing it tells me that he studies the word of God. That he may impart biblical wisdom to the members of Christ's Senate Missionary Baptist Church. And for them too, this year, they will celebrate 20 years under his leadership and direction. Amen. They only started a few months after Agape started. The second thing from this text, we find out that the second thing we know from this text that it describes Dr. Justice is he practices it. He don't just preach it. Anybody knows him. If you go to him on his job, the respect that they show him. When I go and meet him on his job, we go out to lunch. He's one of my lunch buddies. And just the, over at Rollins Trucking Company that he manages and leads the people over there. They give him that same respect over there that I see that you all give him at Christ Center. And the way he carries himself over there is the same way he carries himself at Christ Center. And that love and the admiration the people that work for you that don't worship where you worship. Or may not worship at all. Amen. But they respect him as a man of God over there. Amen. The third thing it tells us about Dr. Justice is he, is he teaches his statutes and ordinances. Amen. Amen. He don't just read it for himself and study it. He don't just practice it, but he teaches it. And so I'm honored to call him friend. He is a mentor and a friend to me, and he's been so uh, for over 10 years now. I met him through Dr. Alvin Marshall. Uh, Dr. Marshall and I used to teach at Southern Bible Institute in college in Dallas together. Dr. Marshall still teaches there. And it's been some years since I've taught there. And through my relationship with him, he introduced me to Dr. Justice. And we've been good friends ever since. The pandemic kind of interrupted our lunches and breakfasts together. We're trying to get back on track, though. But I always knew when we met and we talked, he was always encouraging. Because he loves me as a friend, respects me as a pastor. I love him as a friend, and I respect him as a pastor. And I thought no one else, uh, out of all the speakers that we invited to come, I thought it was only fitting for someone who has been with us and praying for us and encouraged us all these years to come and encourage us once again. So my dear friend, the Reverend Dr. Ed Justice, you will hear from Christ Senate Choir, and then after that, the next voice you will hear is none other than my friend co-labor in the ministry, Dr. Ed Justice, my friend. Amen? Amen.
you're going You're gonna make it God's gonna see you through Hold your head up Put a smile on your face Bless the name of our Lord, from which all blessings flow. He is worthy of every praise. He's the one that went to the cross, the one that walked away from his father to come down and wrap himself in humanity, that we may have the right to the tree of life, and then went through all manner of evil, just let people beat on him and spit on him and pull his beard from his face, whoop him with a cat of nine tails, and then put him on a cross, and then mocked and told him to come down. <laughs> you saved others, save yourself. Come on down from the cross. Then they thought they had him, put him in a borrowed tomb, but it, everybody knew he wasn't going to be there very long. But three days later, early one Sunday morning, 
early one Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hand in heaven and in earth. And that's all we're going to do. Good night. We're going home. Thank you very much. <laughs> we serve a righteous God, a faithful God. It's good to be here and celebrate with you all 20 years. I sit there and thought about 20 years, and the Lord reminded me that it's many here that's You've been in church longer than 20 years. He said, just count up the years of Christianity inside the building. Some of you have been Christians alone 50 years. Some of you have been there 40 years. Some of you have been there 60 years. Some of you only been there a few years. But it does not matter. All the years that we have in Christ in this place today, we ought to be able to give him a hand clap of praise. For he's worthy of a praise. <laughs> it's good to see Pops and Mom here today. I've been praying for them. They've been on my mind. My Lord, I've been praying for them. And she brought me a pot. Amen. 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 Mine, Dr. Powell, mine. <laughs> I'm taking it home. We're not eating nothing here. If we went home with it. Thank you, Agape, for inviting us back one more year, for entrusting us with this pulpit to uh, say what thus said the Lord. God always have a word for us. I'm grateful for my good friend, Dr. Nathan Powell, who has befriended me for many years now, uh, a, good, a very good confidant, a mentor of mine. I'm always bouncing stuff off of him. So when I run through something in the Bible and I feel like I don't understand it like I should, he know I'll be calling him. And, and uh, sometimes it, it takes him an hour to talk to me Sometimes we just have to go to lunch to work it out. But I'm, I'm grateful for our friendship. Thank you, brother. Thank you. He's always, he always, I don't know about you, but he's always got time for me. And if you got a pastor that have time for you, you ought to thank God for him. You just ought to thank God for him. If you got a pastor that's not robbing you, you ought to thank God for him. If you got a guy, if you have a pastor that's not fleecing you, you ought to thank God for him. If you got a pastor that's not standing up here asking for money three times before you get out the door, you ought to thank God for him. That's, he understands the theology of God and, and what God is really saying. It's not about the money. It's about lives and lives being strengthened. So I, I thank you for being my friend, Dr. Powell. Thank you much. Uh, George Ephraim, Reverend Pastor George Ephraim was here on last night. I got a chance to listen to him for the first time. We have become friends through Dr. Powell. And uh, I really, yeah, you might as well sit down. I really enjoyed him on last night. And um, had a chance to go out to his church there in Grand Prairie. I think it's United Christian Fellowship. Nice emphasis of a building. And uh, I've never seen people come down the aisle dancing to give money away. And them brother, them folks over there come down the aisle dancing with their money in their hand. I thought, wow, I need to take you over to Crank Center. <laughs> we got some folks over there. When you ask for offering, they God has sustained us for 19 years. We, we, we're right on your footsteps. For 20 years, the ups and downs and all the prayers and all the Bible studies and all the words being preached on Sunday, sometimes twice on Sunday. And then for those that will come back and hear the word of God, 
than all the slowful ones who don't care nothing about the word of God. Who act like they don't care nothing about the word of God. And I never understood that. And that's, and, and that's what we struggle with as pastors. How can something so good and that be so plain and you can walk away without nothing? And walk away and be just like those in the book of Judges that we go back and do what is right in our own eyes. For 20 years of preaching and teaching the uncompromising word of God, I see have strengthened many of you. And that's what God is looking for. God is looking for those who receive the word of God, surrenders to the word of God and then go out and tell people about the word of God so thank you all for coming back Christ Center thank you all for being here musicians our preachers our mothers of the church thank you all for being here I sit there a minute ago and I think I counted four or five mothers you don't want to get that many mothers to come back out on Sunday evening so thank you all for coming out we won't prolong the time. We're going to throw up what God has given me and we're going on home and watch the rest of the game. Amen. And get ready for Dallas to win tomorrow night. Y'all act like that game last week scared y'all. They'll win tomorrow. Don't get, up, don't get upset. They'll win tomorrow. First Samuel 17. Our Father, our God, how we thank you for your goodness and your grace. How we thank you, God, that how you have entrusted your gospel with a feeble man such as I. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that rests within and abide within us to the day of redemption. Now, Lord, we pray that you would have your way. Unstop our ears that we may hear from you. Saturate our hearts to be receptive what your spirit will be, see, will be saying. Remove the scales from our eyes that we may be able to see your glorious work, especially after 20 years. Will you be the glory, the honor, and the majesty Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know it is your custom to stand doing the reading of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. But that ought to be everybody's custom. We have a lot of reading to do, so if you don't mind standing, it covers the entire 17th chapter of um, 1 Samuel, but we won't read that. We'll skip around just to get the gist of, of the message. Um, the first four verses reads of the 17th chapter, 1 Samuel. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Socloth, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Socloth and Azekah in Ephadam. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched at the valley of Elah and set battle and array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there was a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Drop down there to that eighth verse. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine? And ye servants of Saul, choose you a man. That's where he messed up. Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If I be able to fight with him, if, if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. That was a lie. But, I prevail, but if I prevail against him and kill him, then he shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. 
that was another mistake he made. Go down to uh, verses 42 through 46. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, didn't think anything of him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? With staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. That was a big mistake. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, unto the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou come to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. Yeah, that, that's it right there. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know, listen, that there is a God in Israel. We want to talk, as your program has already said, against all odds, but God. Against all odds, comma, but God. You know, many folks are worried about our election that's going to be coming up in 2024. Many people are already worried if Donald Trump is running again. You need to understand it's really not about Donald Trump, not about Biden. We worry about things we have no need to worry about. People are worried about what is the Senate going to do? What is the House of Congress going to do? We worry about things that just doesn't make sense. Nothing wrong with being concerned and being good citizens. But believe me, Donald Trump is not worried about you. Joe Biden is not worried about you. These are giants doing their own thing. Let them do their own thing. You vote the way you want to vote. And we get on with life. But give praise and honor unto the God that made Joe Biden and made Donald Trump. They too, like you and I, one day will have to answer for all the deeds that's done in this body. I just wanted to kind of throw out about giants that may be in your life. It may be a car note. It may be a house note. Maybe it's a wayward son or wayward daughter. Maybe, maybe it's, a, it's a no good mate. Y'all have had some of them. <laughs> Against all odds, <laughs> comma, but God. <laughs> I know y'all had some heavy preachers over here in the last few days. Pastor Powell preached on Friday night. Y'all had some giants over here. Pastor Ephraim, then you had Pastor uh, Martin this morning. Dr. Hawkins, wow, y'all y'all did have a heavy hitter. Straight from Oak Cliff under Tony Evans. Yeah, y'all had some big hitters over here this morning. And then you called me. <laughs> it's against all laws. <laughs> This, this word, but, it, but.
but introduces something or something that contrasts to what already has been said. But God. In the days of Exodus, most of the Israelites had failed to enter into the promised land because they was afraid of the giants that was there in the promised land. Y'all remember what they said over in Numbers that when they went over there, they said, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And then, and so we were in their sight. In, in other words, whatever you think is right. If you think somebody is a giant, then they're a giant. Even over there, they ran into the giants of Anak. And if y'all remember, they had a king over there by the name of King Og who was all over 13 feet tall. Now you walk up to a man that's 13 feet tall and he's got brass across his chest and brass on his legs and he got a spear in his hand and you gonna fight him? Y'all see where this is going? And, and, and Israel was a little afraid of this guy, but Goliath was over nine feet tall. These some big dudes. And if you keep on living, you're going to run into some giants. And well, amen. Amen, amen. Maybe, maybe we don't have enough money to buy the food that we want. Maybe we can't go to all the places we want. These become giants in many of our lives. No doubt about it, this guy named Goliath was bad. And I don't mean that in a good way. He was big, bad, dangerous, and he was determined to inflict the fear upon all of his enemies because he, he was the one that walked out and defiled the armies of God. And you don't have to worry about somebody, a giant, defiling the armies of you. Because God is your God. God is your maker and your creator. And God knows exactly when you need to be protected. He knows exactly when you need to be provided for. And he knows exactly where you are. You know, you're in a giant-sized battle. Not only by the massive sight, but by the effects that it have on you. Oh, yeah. These Israelites were afraid, and because of their fear, they became paralyzed. They couldn't move. You ever been drunk? Now, those laughed. See, they've been drunk. They. And the rest of y'all just laughed. Y'all been drunk too, y'all. You ever been stuck? In a relationship? That sounded like I heard my wife say, yep. <laughs> they, they get, they, these giants will paralyze you. They'll, they'll have you stuck. Has fear of a giant ever gripped you to that kind of degree? Prevented you from moving forward? Jobs, relationships, wealth, kind of dictating your emotions and your actions or the lack of your actions. You ever ran into giants like that? The giant kind of set the agenda. Yeah. He kind of hoards the ball. It's my ball. And he just won't go away. You ever had giants like that? Night after night, these Israelites lay awake in the fear of knowing that they had no legitimate contender that was going to go up against this giant. But David was different. He saw things different than other people saw him. It wasn't the first time David had been out to the war to go out there with his brothers. You see that in verse 15. You'd have to go back and read that entire chapter. 
But this time in the battle site, when David came up and his father Jesse had sent him out there to see how the war was going and see how his brothers was doing in the war, he heard two things. He heard what the giant said, but David was a little nosy. He also went to the brother and he said, hey man, listen, what do y'all say the king gonna do for the man that whooped that dude? <laughs> and and they said, you ain't heard. King gonna give you his daughter. Not only is the king gonna give you his daughter, but the king gonna make your whole family free. And David got to thinking, man, not bad for a day at the office. <laughs> when I kill this dude, I get to be a part of the royal family. And also my family is free. Can you imagine not paying taxes? David family wouldn't have to pay taxes. They wouldn't have to group things together, send out to the war no more. They're going to be free. You want to get rid of you, giant. Hmm. David had a different perspective. David saw the giant hadn't been to the doctor. Y'all heard him because he called him uncircumcised. And if you're going to be a part of God's family, you have to be circumcised. All the males from eight days older, was from eight days on, were circumcised of the Jews. And he called this man, you're uncircumcised. You ain't been to the doctor. And if you ain't been to the doctor, you ain't under God's covenant. And that's the same thing to anybody in here that's not saved. Then you're not under God's covenant. You've got to be born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. He had a different perspective. Hmm. Many people look at their giants without seeing the status. David saw the spiritual reality behind the physical problem. Yeah. Giants rule many of our hearts and homes today because we've lost the ability to look beyond what we see. I remember, if you look over, you remember Elijah and his servant when they was down at Dothan. And the servant went and told Elijah, he says, listen, Elisha rather, he said, listen, we got the army of Syria here surrounded us. And the prophet got up and looked outside and says, Lord, open up his eyes. Let him see what we got to fight for us. And, and the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he, and he saw all the angels camped around their enemies. And that's what we have to do. You've got to look at your giant in a different light. You've got to see beyond the giant and see God behind the giant because God stands in the back of you in front of you on the side of you and he's not you know, you shouldn't have to worry about any kind of uncircumcised giant taking over your life he saw something different Paul put it this way over in to the uh, the Ephesus church there in 2 and 6 there in Ephesians we already sit in heavenly places. So if you're already sitting in heavenly places, what that means that Christians are in two places at one time. We are here on the earth, but you're also already in heaven, sitting in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. You don't have to fight to win the victory. You're fighting from the victory. You've already won the war. When you look at it like that, that means you got to look down from heaven and look down upon your giant. And then you have a hard time. You need to put some glasses on because he'll just be a little bitty glimpse. You do know God says we'll be, we'll, we'll, we will mount up with wings as eagles and God compare Christians to eagles and pilots today say they've seen eagles at 37,000 feet in the air. If an eagle can fly 30, 37,000 feet in the air, they can still see a little bitty mice on the ground. 
And if an eagle can do that, and God says you are just like an eagle, you ought to be able to look down on your problems, fly above the storm, and wait on the storm. Wait till it's over with. You got to remember, your giant is not under God's covenant. I got a few points and we're going to go home. <laughs> the first point, when fear arises, you ought to respond in faith. Look, look, look at verse 32. I don't know if we read that or not. And David said to Saul, because what happened here, Saul was scared. All the army was scared. David's brothers were scared. Everybody sitting on the side of the mountain scared because one man coming out there defiling the armies of God. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go out and fight. Maybe that's what's wrong with us. Maybe we've forgotten that we are nothing but a servant of a living God. And if you are a servant of a living God, you ought to be able to stand up and be ready for battle anytime God calls your name. You ought to be like the men in the army. You ought to be able to stand at attention. And when they call your name and call your number, you ought to show up and say, here I am, God, send me. Respond in faith. Face your fears with faith. Solomon tell us in Proverbs 3 and 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not toward your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The writer of Hebrews tells us, Now faith is the substance of things that's hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith have a destiny. And whatever you are looking at, you ought to be looking at your destiny through the lenses of the cross. Because that's why he came. That's why he gave his life. That's why he bled. That's why they buried him. That's why he got up three days later and declared with all power in the palm of his hands. For we walk by faith. And not by sight. He tells Joshua, Thou shall meditate on this word day and night. And maybe that's what's wrong with us. We're not meditating on the word day and night. Because if you meditate on the word day and night, then we might not sin against him. And if you're meditating on the word day and night, then you realize that is not your fight. The fight belongs to God all by himself. I'm reminded of David. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, God. My strength and my redeemer. When you respond to a giant in your life, respond in faith. And then refuse the opinions of others. Everybody can't go with you. Mm. Verse 28 and 29, look what he says. And Eliab, Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why comest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride, man. And the naughtiness of the heart. For thou come down that thou mayest see the battle. And David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause for such a time as this? <laughs> Am I not here <laughs> for such a time as this? Naysayers are on both sides of the valley. One naysayer was saying, come out and I'll kill you. The other naysayers were saying, you can't go out and fight against them. There was naysayers on both sides of the cross. Oh, some were standing down there saying, you saved others, come down and save yourself. 
Others was running and hiding away from him. But his mother Mary was standing at the cross. John was standing at the cross. You've got nacelles on both sides of the cross, on both sides of the valley. You've got to, you know what you got to do? Just refuse the opinion of those naysayers. When somebody tell you you can't do something and you know God has already ordained you to do it, then don't worry about what they say. Stand up and go out and fight for God. Don't be deterred by family members. I think somebody said it was last night or this morning. They're the ones that hold you back quicker than anybody. Don't be deterred by family members or fellow soldiers that's not standing for Christ. I, I don't know about you, Pastor Pal, and, and, and uh, Pastor Ephraim, I, but I, I get a lot of folks who say, you know, uh, we can't do it like that. You know, we ain't never did it like that before. There's so many excuses to building the kingdom of God right here on earth. And if God has already given it to your pastor, Listen to me. <laughs> if he's already given it to your pastor and you don't believe your pastor and you keep fighting against your pastor, go find another pastor that you can submit yourself to. It's real easy. God is not going to put you anywhere, nowhere, at a church under a pastor that he does not want you listening to. Now, if you feel that your pastor is not telling you what's right, Go somewhere else. But you ought to be able to obey the word of God. If he's telling you, just ask him how high you want me to jump. Don't be deterred. Not even by the enemy. And remember your past feats. Look at verse 6, 36. David, what David did, he got a little greedy here. He said, what, say that, say that to me again. What did, uh, what's going to be done for the man that killed this uncircumcised Philistine? And they said, well, David, you get a pretty girl and, and, uh, and your family get to be free. His brother interrupted and said, uh, man, you ought to go back home. Who you lead them sheep to? He, he looked at his brother and said, man, ain't there a cause for such a time as this? He turned his back to his brother and says, now, what did y'all say the king was going to give? He's still he's a little nosy. What you say is King going to give? And they told David again. And David said, well, that's enough for me. They called David up to Saul. Look what, look verse 36 in. He's, he's talking to Saul. And Saul, tell, he tells Saul, listen. Because Saul tells him, you know, you're not going to be able to do it, David. You're too small. You don't know what you're doing. But David said, but thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Look, look here. Seeing that he had what? Defiled the armies of the living God. You ought to deal with your present situation according to the meditation of God's word and the thoughts of how God delivered you on yesterday. Let me put it in layman terms. Who brought you from where you were to where you are today. Who's been taking care of your light bills 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Who took care of the car when it broke down for you? And I know many of us thinking, when I'm smart, I did that. I got intellect. I went and got the oil chain. Who gave you the money for the oil chain? Well, I work for the oil chain. I go to work every day. I do this every day. Well, who gave you the breath? in your body to be alive today. Sooner or later, it's got to narrow down but to nobody but God all by himself. Remember where God has already brought you from. He said, I killed the lion and I killed the bear. And this so uncircumcised Philistine, he's going to be just like one of those. Remember what he promised others and what he did for them. Remember what he's promised you and what he's done for you. He promised others salvation, salvation on a boat, 
Didn't he save Noah and those few folk and all the rest of the world perished? He promised others that I'll bring you into a land that flowed with milk and honey. Didn't he bring them into a land that flowed with milk and honey? He promised you peace. Didn't he give you peace? Listen, John 14, 27, listen what he said. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Not as the world give you. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let your heart be afraid. Hasn't God gave you peace in chaotic situations in life? When the giants start pressing against you, you ever lost a home before? You ever been in foreclosure before? You ever had to file bankruptcy before? You ever had to want some, some meat with your food? Maybe, maybe y'all. Maybe, maybe y'all haven't. I, I told the church this morning, I remember making sugar sandwiches. I remember eating beans and I asked my mama, mama, where's the meat? She said, well, the meat is in the beans. I remember just have, eating potatoes sometime, and I say, Mama, where's the meat? She say, the meat is in the potatoes. See, there's too many of y'all that grew up, and all you have to do is just walk in and flip a switch, and the lights come on. But I've had to walk in and pour some coal oil in a lamp, and then light it, and put it on a candlestick. I've had to walk in the house and put wood in a wood-burning stove just to get it warm. Now you walk in, all you do is flip a switch. But when you remember where God has brought you from, you can't help to do nothing but stand up and give God some praise for who he is. For who he is. Remember your past feats. He promised you life and life more abundantly. Didn't he do it? Remember you, you got to respond in faith. Remember your past feats. And remember, everything don't fit you. Mm -mm, look, look at verse 39. Saul clothed him with his armor. Saul said, listen, you can't go out there and fight naked. You know, you really, you know, you know what? They, Saul really wasn't looking for him to live. He was going to dress him up to die. And folks will dress you up to die. You got to watch folks. They'll dress you up to die. They had you getting in relationships. You know you, they know you shouldn't be in. Verse, 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 look at verse 39, I'm sorry. And David girded his sword upon his armor and essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these. For I have not proved them. And David put them off him. You got to put away nasty attitudes. They don't fit you. You got to numb your fears with faith. Because fear don't fit you. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. But he gave you a spirit of peace, love, and a sound mind. You got to neutralize your kinfolk around you. Everybody just can't go with you everywhere God wants you to go. Everybody can't fight the fight that you're supposed to be fighting. You just got to let them know, remove everything that doesn't fit. You know you ought to be in church on Sunday morning. Don't drink so much on Saturday night. You know you should be in here giving God praise, glory, and honor. Up in the choir singing to us, leading us in worship. Just stay out of hotel rooms and stuff. It don't fit you. It don't fit. Quit cussing folks out. That don't fit you. And lastly, you ought to rely on the help. From your heavenly father. This, this is the guest of the lesson. And I'm, and I'm, I'm finished. Verse 45 says, Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. That got me right there. That, that, that shook me up. 
And I'm not as smart as most of you guys are. So what I had to do was go back and study and see what, why would he say that? So I went and looked up that word, Lord. Now, I know it's in the Bible a whole lot of times, but this time I thought David meant something when he said that. He said, the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. You defiled him. David, what David did, he remembered the sheep and the bear or the lamb and the bear. David remembered the name of God when he slew the lamb and the bear. Because at that, what he placed, what he said right here is this, that's Jehovah. And Jehovah, you got to remember, once you remember the names of God, Jehovah, this is against all odds. Jehovah is a relational God. He is the I am that I am God. Whatever you need, I am the personal God. You don't have to be afraid of those giants that's in your way, Jake, in your way, David. But also, he said, Jehovah, he said, the Lord God of hosts. So I looked at that word host, and I put it all together, and that means Jehovah Tosbah. And I go, well, what are you talking about, Lord? He says, I am the army, or I'm the host. You can do it any way you want to do it. I am that I am because I'm the host. It ain't nobody coming against you that's going to be able to hurt you without getting through me first. What he did, he said, you are my personal army, Lord. And you've got a personal army when you get to fighting battles that you know that God does not want anybody else to be part of. They are your battles. You fight your battles with the Lord. He remembered his name. The God of hosts. And I don't care what happens in your life. You remember God's names. Jehovah. The personal God. Elohim. I am the creator God. I'm the one that put things together. I'm the one that made everything even before you got here. I'm the one who, who carved you out of the dust of the ground and shaped you into who you are and blew into your nostrils the breath of life. You became a little with me. I am Elohim because I am the creator of God. But I'm Jehovah Jireh as well. I'm Jehovah Nisi as well. Whatever you need, I am he. All by myself. I'm so glad to hear about that. Because when Jesus got on the cross, he looked up to heaven and he said, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. It's a lot. And I know Satan thought he had him. He got him crucified, had him stuck in the side, and Jesus gave up the ghost and he died and, and he went around saying, we got him. He's down for the count. And he went and told some soldier, go break his legs and make sure that he's, that he's dead. But the Bible had already declared that he would have no broken bones. So the soldier walked up and stuck him in the side and he said, Y'all, oh yeah, he's dead. And Satan got to being a little happy Wherever he was around the, around, the, around the cross that day, the soldiers got a little happy and said, well, it's over with. All the disciples ran away from him and said, it's over with. But I come to tell you, what happened on that day is the same thing that's happening. What happened three days later can the same thing that can happen to you now. You can get up out of that grave that you may be in right now, something that's weighing heavily upon you, and you think you're dead unto it. God came that he may give us a resurrected life. Even on this side of the Jordan, you have got to be born again. That's why he said in John 3, 16, for whosoever believeth in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Three days later from the grave, he got up with all power in the palm of his hands. You ought to be glad today that you can fight your battles against all odds. 
because you got a God that stands with you. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Against all odds, a giant meets a giant killer. And that's what happens to us when we come into the presence of God and that we give him our life. We become giant killers. If you're here today, and you've heard this word today, and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would implore you today that you ought to answer the call. You hear him call. He said that I stand at the door knocking, and if you would open up, I'll come in, and I'll sup with you, and you with me. You don't know him. This is a good day to make a choice. Come in, because against all odds, he'll make you victorious. Amen? Would you come as they play? We've heard a word today. God has sent forth a word to us to let us know that we can be victorious in all that we do. In his name. You ought to come. You might be one that need prayer today. I don't know. But even that, you can come for prayer. Because God is standing, waiting to receive you. He's standing, waiting to answer the call. Would you come? Agape is celebrating 20 years today of being in the ministry. That tells you that they are a good church, God-blessed church, spiritual church, that has a man of God who is teaching sound doctrine. You ought to come. Sit up under this teaching. Hear the word of God. Give God your life. Become a giant killer. Because against all odds, you can be victorious. You ought to come. Some of us sitting in here, there might be somebody said that you'll never amount to anything. You'll never be anything. But a word came today that lets us know that even when people count us out, that against all odds, because we are in Christ Jesus, we are victorious. You ought to come. If you don't know him, you ought to come and ask him to come into your life to save you. Acknowledge that you are a sinner living out of his will. Would you come? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Give the Lord a hand to praise. Oh, praise him like you mean it. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him glory. A whole lot of things don't last 20 years. Amen. Y'all know about it. We're only still standing all by the grace of God. Amen. 
One thing I know and one thing I'm, I'm sure of, God didn't call me to pastor Agape because he sent me to Southwest Seminary. He didn't call me to pastor Agape because I was already in the military at the time of the chaplain. It had nothing to do with my qualifications. It had everything to do with him and his call, divine call of my life. But he gave me those tools so that I could be effective in doing what he called me to do. The pastors that are present with us today, the only difference between us and our congregation is the fact that God loves us all. And the only difference with us is function. And I know in some places the pastor is way more important than everybody else. But that shouldn't be so because all of us have a role and responsibility to play. Amen. I thank my dear friend, Dr. Ed Justice, for that wonderful message against all odds but God. And we know that we've been through some trials, some tribulations, some triumphs, some low valleys, some high valleys here at Agape over these 20 years. Amen. But I thank God that he has put men in my life to help me remind me. Since Dr. Ed Justice, my dear friend, what a wonderful message. I thank God for Pastor Ephraim. Amen. First Lady Kim, they were here with us. On last evening, and what a mighty word that he brought. Amen. And Dr. Hawkins was here this morning and gave us another reminder. I don't know about you, but I need those reminders. I need those men of God who speak in truth into my life to encourage me to keep on going. Amen. As I said this morning, that this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. The very hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life is passing agape for the last 20 years. But I thank God that I've had the, the privilege of walking that journey with our God members over the years. Amen. Amen. Some came in the very beginning. Some came along the way. But the, thank God is that you're still praying for us and you're still walking with us today. One thing I remember when I was on Staff Oakland Bible Fellowship and Dr. Evans was being interviewed. And he asked, they asked Dr. Evans, they said, what is your most proudest accomplishment? And that man had had many accomplishments. And you know what he said? He said that my children are still members of my church. Amen. One of my proudest moments since being a pastor of Agape is having my family be members of this church. That has been an honor. Some of them are not with us anymore. Some of them don't come anymore. But it's still have an honor to say that, hey, he was my pastor. Amen. And wherever they may be today, I just hope that they're in a church where they can learn and grow. Amen. Whatever they're doing. Amen. Because you probably never thought that God would call your son to do what he's doing today. Amen. And I only stand in John's shoes because this is what God called me to do. Amen. And sometimes, as pastors, our family don't get us. Can I get the witness, pastors? They do not get us. Because all we want is God's best for them. And we want to see them walk with God and know him the way we know him. And have, a, have them bless their life like he's blessed our lives. But you cannot make your family want it. They have to want it for themselves. All you can do is tell them. All you can do is invite them. And that's all we can do to our membership. We can want God's best for you, but you have to want it for yourself. Amen. You have to have that desire in your heart more than anything else. I want to be obedient to God. I want to walk with him and talk with him and know that I'm his very own. Amen. That is my prayer for you. Whether you're members of Agape, whether you're members of, of Christ Centered, whether you're members of United Christian Fellowship in Arlington, Every person needs a covering in a home. Amen. Every one of us need a, a, a covering in a home. And I've said this before. If I was not the pastor of Agape, I would humbly submit and go and serve under Dr. Justice's leadership. And I wouldn't have no problem with it. Amen. I would have not no, any problem with it. He wouldn't have any problem with me because I would not try to take over his job. I would simply say, what do you need me to do? 
And I know he's a praying man. And whatever you say, hey, Pastor Powell, I need you to do this. And I would just do that. I would humbly serve under Pastor Ephraim. Just humbly serve. And I would say, whatever it is you need me to do. Because once I submit there, then I submit under the lordship of that house. Amen. Regardless if I pass it this house. But long when I go under their roof and at their house, then I have to submit to the lordship there. Amen. It's odd that people will go ask somebody else when God gives them an under shepherd. Amen. A knowledgeable under shepherd. So I know when I'm praying and talking to God and when we meet and we talk and we talk as pastors, trying to keep it real, as Reverend uh, Pastor Ephraim said last night, it make you think you're like you're going crazy. To do this job and do it effectively, it make you think like you're going crazy. Because everything doesn't compute. Because again, all you want is God's best for God's people. And all you know, all you can do is tell them. And break down the word of God for them. And hopefully they'll pick it up and say, I'm going to run with it. I'm going to run with it. So it really breaks a pastor's heart when you don't show up. When you feel, when the the only message that you've given them, because you didn't say anything, just walked out the door. That that relationship didn't matter. That's why I brought up what Dr. Evans said about his kids. That all, those, all these years later, they're still members of his church. They didn't go anywhere else. But they respect their father so much. They honor him that way. They honor him that way. Amen. Because we need prayer, too. We have feelings, too. We hurt, too. We pray, too. Amen. But sometimes we're treated like we don't. God puts people in your path for a reason. And as often say, you got to know why. Amen. Before you cut it short. Because, again, you might not understand them. Because that's a high calling. That's an honor to be in that position. But I thank God that I don't have to walk this journey by myself. Amen. So 20 years, praise be to God. Because Agape would not be in, in, in Fort Worth. We had no intention of staying here. At all. At all. But God. Amen. But God. That's why we still live here now. Because, but God. I was going to finish my master's degree and we were out of here. Amen. Wasn't planning on staying here. But when God had us to stay. And we started Agape. And the people we met over the years. And especially when my family started coming here to be here with us. That meant the world to me and Sister Nora. And it still does. And wherever you may be and wherever you may be serving, hopefully you're somewhere where you're learning the word of God still. And hopefully you're, you're doing the will of God. Because as Joshua said in Joshua 24, 15, regardless of what you all do, ask for me in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. I am so afraid of God that I have to live the way I live because of the fact I fear him. But fear means reverence. That Hebrew word, y'all, ray, is reverence. Amen. I share this with you, and we're going to close. My first chaplain boss, when I became a chaplain in the United States Air Force, Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Bruce Hewing, he looked at me and he said, Nate, he said, don't you ever do anything to destroy your anointing. And then he said, don't you do anything, allow anybody else to do anything to destroy your anointing. Because it's the anointing of God that breaks the yoke and lifts the burden. It's the anointing of God that you preach and you teach under. Amen. That gives your preaching power. Your witness power. Because once you step off under that, then you don't have a covering. Then you're in trouble. 
Because Satan can mess with you anytime he wants. And in, it, that just go for me and me. But you understand, all Christians are ministers of the gospel. Doesn't mean all of us are clergy, but all of us are called to serve God. And as long as you walk under that anointing and that covering, God will use your life to do the impossible. Amen. Against all odds, but God. You and I are here today because of the anointing and blessing of God on our life. Amen. And we don't have to walk this journey by ourselves. But it's okay to have a reminder. Amen. These last three days since Friday, I've been reminded. I, I needed that reminder. Amen. Because this is a tough walk. This is a tough journey. That's why everybody won't do it. Everybody won't be blessed, but they don't walk, walk a true Christian walk. Amen. And I'm going to encourage you tonight that walk the Christian walk the way God intended for it to be. Stop making excuses. Stop letting the pandemic hold you captive and hostage. Stop allowing our politics and everything you're looking at on TV to hold you hostage. Amen. Because those folks are going to do what they're going to do. But the church should be doing what it's supposed to be doing. Amen. So stop losing sleep over all of that. Amen. Because God's going to deal with them just like he's going to deal with me and you. Amen. So I thank you. For sharing this moment and this day with us. I thank God for our staff. I thank God for Reverend Victor and Reverend Sampson. Yes. Part of our staff here at the church. My wife, Sister Noel, we have church secretary, Sister Gail, our financial secretary. I thank God for all of them and all of each and every one of you. I thank God for our other ministerial staff here at Agape, our deacons, all of you, our teachers. I thank God for each of you. And I pray God's best because God has something special in store for us for such a time as this. Amen. He didn't just keep us around for 20 years for no reason. That means he has plans and purposes for us. And he didn't keep Christ centered around for 20 years. He has a plan and purpose for you all. He has not kept UCF around all these years. Amen. Because he has a plan and purpose. And we've just been reminded of that. State of, state of journey. Amen. Don't give up and don't give in. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. We have some refreshments uh, for you in the back. Pastor Ephraim, can you come up, please? Dr. Justice. Before we do that, uh, my wife, Sister Noah, she has something for First Lady. Sister Ella, can you come up, please? <laughs> she said it in a soft voice. <laughs> We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. I'm so grateful for Sister Ella. She's been a good friend to my wife for years. I thank God for that friendship. I thank God for the friendship uh, between Sister Kim and Sister Noah as well. And the friendship they have. But I'm going to ask if Pastor Ethan would just say something to us from his heart tonight to encourage us real quick. And then I'm going to ask if Dr. Justice will give us his last comments and give us a benediction. Amen. What a blessing um, to be here and to hear the kind of word that we've heard tonight. And I'm sure you've heard through the course of this past three days. We pray that the grace of God is upon us and um, the word of God has found good ground in all of our hearts we thank god and one thing that i would like to say is that whatever the case that we should continue in the lord say they that wait upon the lord and um, shall renew their strength we shall mount up with wings like eagles and then we know that that we can run and not be weary we can walk and not faint so whatever you do 
as a child of God, the only thing that you cannot do is you cannot quit. Amen. Amen. Keep on keeping on through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good to see you here, brother. Good to see you. <coughs> Pardon me. I was um, still thinking about, I got up this morning, got dressed. And uh, I'm better now. <laughs> Told the church this morning that uh, I got up and got dressed this morning. And my wife came in and looked at me and said, you're not wearing that. So she turned around and walked out, and I almost went behind her. <laughs> but the Bible said, this is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> we ought to rejoice and be glad. <laughs> Every day is a day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it, irregardless of what happens. I know that COVID did a number on the church, and, and, but God, I believe that God did some pruning Amen. during that time. Some people hadn't returned, and that's because they weren't real members to begin with. You cannot allow something to give you fear like that. Once you understand what is going on in the world, that's a giant. God will fight your giants for you. Put it in his hand. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. Let him direct your path. Being in the house of the Lord is where we need to be. It's the best place in the world. And Christians got the greatest news in the world. But we're more quieter than everybody in the world. We ought to be shouting to the top of our lungs about what God has done for us. Amen. And one day, because life is short. If you live to be 100, it's short. But one day, you're going to step into eternity. Why not do it while you're here on this side and give glory to God at a place like this? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for having Thank my, my baby for being here, Javon her being here, justice and chastity. They, my grandkids came. Thank y'all for coming. We're standing. May the Lord bless thee. May the Lord keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee. May the Lord enlarge our coast. And may the Lord keep us all from the evil one. Now unto him that is able to present you faultless before the presence of his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be glory, dominion, and power both now and forever. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let the church say, Amen. 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 Before you depart, we have some cake and refreshments for you. Please take some with us, with you. We don't want to be fat all by ourselves. <laughs>